Hello everyone, my name is Caitlin Bolt Lovett. I am a registered dietitian and owner of A Life Nourished. Welcome to the channel. Today I am going to be talking about how to care for your body when you can't hear your body cues yet. This is a topic that I get from a lot of um, clients and people who are just coming to ask, you know, they're just starting in with their intuitive eating or body liberation journey. And they don't really know how to listen to what their body needs or what it's asking for. And so if this is the case for you, this is going to be a video to help clear some of that up. So if you like this video and want more like it, please hit subscribe hit the like button. You can comment down below if there's a topic that you would like to hear from me in the future. I would love to hear from you. So let's go ahead and dive in. So the question that I got from one of my clients was, how do you start to care for your body at the beginning of this journey when you don't necessarily know how to listen to those body cues yet? So we talk a lot about you know how to listen into the body, how to get out of the head and into the body because these conversations up here can become really ungrounded. We can't necessarily trust everything that they're saying because they're based on old stories, maybe old trauma. And the body at the same time can be having different conversations. But if we've never learned to listen into them or it hasn't felt like a safe space in the past to be able to do that, it's a kind of a tricky conversation or it can feel confusing. What do you mean listen to my body? I don't know what it's trying to tell me. And there is this term called introceptive awareness. And basically what introceptive awareness is, is, is when our bodies are giving us constant cues. So maybe they are certain emotions that show up, um, having to go to the bathroom, uh, hunger cues, fullness cues, uh, thirst cues, uh, sexual arousal cues. All of those are in our body somewhere and we can look at actual a body map of the body and watch that diff different emotions that come up actually are centered in different areas around the body and they have a different heat to them or color to them if we look at a heat map of the body. And the amazing thing is that individuals are completely different people. You know, it isn't that we can just make a blanket statement and say, do these three, th three things, and then you'll figure out how to listen to the body for you. At the same time, we have a lot of shared experiences. We all feel certain emotions, generally in the same area. We can look and see there's certain patterns of what it looks like to feel your hunger, feel your uh, fullness, feel your thirst. And that can really help us guide in general directions as to where to go. So what I like to start with telling clients is that this is not a perfect process. This is a process of exploration. This is about you getting to build a relationship with your body. And just like any relationship you're building, it takes time to build trust, right? You're not just gonna walk into a new relationship and trust the person off the bat. That, that takes time to build because we are vulnerable in that space and we do want to be able to show up as our true, true genuine selves. And at the same time, if you've been hurt in the past or have traumatic relationships in the past, you're going to kind of slowly isn't ease into that relationship. You're going to want to take it slow. You're going to want to take it at a pace that means, you know, that you can start to kind of step in, step out. You can take time for yourself to, um, you know, be able to see how you're feeling after, you know, a date night or something. It's the same thing as you're building back your relationship with yourself. That trust, the more that we can really build on that, the more that when the certain cues come up for you, you can start to say, oh, I know what that is. I can trust what that's saying for my body versus your head going, can I trust that? Can I not trust that? I'm not really sure. Well, the more that you do something, the more that you practice listening in over and over with curiosity, the more that we can really wholeheartedly bring in the support system from the ground up of saying, yes, I can trust these cues that are coming in. So if you're somebody who, you know, at first maybe you think, oh yeah, my hunger and fullness cues, I totally have those. Well, let's look at that. What if we're, you know, are you just looking at the extremes of hunger, the extremes of fullness, or can you trust those little subtler cues? 
can you trust that, and this is one of my favorites, when you're thinking about food more, that in and of itself is a cue that you're starting to get hungry. That is a cue that usually in the next hour, you need to prioritize eating versus for a lot of people, they have a, a distrust with that feeling of thinking about food. They feel like it makes them you know, shameful, wrong, um, that it they should feel guilty for feeling that. In, in actuality, that is a biological cue coming forward and allowing you to slowly but surely ease into, okay, I need to start you know, planning for my next meal. I need to make sure that everything is in place so that I can set the time, time aside to be able to eat. And so when we look at some of those more subtle cues, it makes sense that it takes some time to build trust around those. And I use the word curiosity because when we're using, when we're getting curious, when we're data collecting, it's really hard to get into that black and white mindset, right? You know, there, there is no right or wrong. We're just letting ourselves be the, you know, experiment. We're get, letting ourselves be able to really see, okay, are there more subtle cues in here? Can we explore what it feels like to um, listen to emotion and give myself options as to how I can best support myself? And that comes down to, you know, your body is also giving you just body cues all the time as to what you need on the daily basis, when you need more rest, when you need alone time, when you need a little bit more, you know, invigorating just movement, when you need to allow yourself to maybe slow down the mind a little bit and just tap out. And all of those are really helpful cues to help ourselves really care for ourselves. And again, they're going on all the time. Whether we're listening to them not is, is a, or not is a different ball game. And the more that we can allow ourselves to set time aside during the day to really ask ourselves questions, to listen in, the more that some of those cues that are constantly going on below the head can really come forward and be a little bit louder, a little bit more pronounced. We also get better at listening for them. So, you know, when that time comes, when um, you're noticing towards the end of the day, you're getting really lethargic, um, you notice yourself getting a little bit snippy, maybe a little bit foggy headed, you can note that, oh, you know, this is actually a great time for me to have a snack. I think that, you know, for me, I know when I get a little bit foggy headed, that means that, you know, it, it's time to really listen into that. At the same time, you can start to hone in on, man, I am just beat. I feel like my mind's going a mile a minute. I feel like um, I'm just spinning my wheels. I think it would be a great option for me to hit pause on my work, step outside, take a walk, or go sit outside for a second and take a couple deep breaths. The more that we can hone in on what emotions are coming up, what feelings are coming up inside our body and not our head, the more that we can really support what is coming up and then meet our needs on a consistent, timely basis. And that does take some time and it definitely takes some practice because again, it is not the same for every person. The amazing thing is once you start this process, you can get a really great grasp on how it works for you as an individual. And it's very different from your neighbor, your sister, your mom. And that really can give you the power to be able to understand what is going on, build that trusting relationship so that you don't feel like you're always fighting with your body or confused or frustrated that you know, you're letting your emotions run over a thing. Those emotions are great tools for you. It's just about realizing, and this is my you know, favorite mantra um, from Sonia Renee Taylor, my body is my ally. When we come at it with that curiosity and that understanding that my body is my ally, we can start coming to this exploration of how can I care for my body in a completely different way. So I hope that was helpful. And if you have any comments, um, anything that you'd like to share for me, please feel free to leave it down below or shoot over to Instagram, A Life Nourished, and I will see you next time. Thanks.